my name is Bridger Faiths, and welcome to Master Stockman Consulting's educational video series on business power tools for agriculture. You know, in ag, we use a lot of tools and we're used to using a lot of tools. It could be as simple a tool as this T-post or maybe as useful a tool as this bell wagon. But today, we're really gonna focus on business tools for agriculture. You know, whether you're raising chickens and maybe selling some eggs at the local farmer's market, or even pro uh, selling produce from your garden, or you could be producing livestock. These tools will help you get you on the road to a profitable and sustainable ag business. We have seven videos in this series that'll help you. The first video is basic farm and ranch economics. Then we have business tools for agriculture. Then using the Wyoming Ranch Tools site. Then we have record keeping for ag. Then we have getting started in agriculture. And then we finish up with implementing the scientific process and implementing ag research. These videos are made possible through funding from Western SARE and we appreciate their support. In this video, Bart and Stan will talk to us about understanding the scientific process. Thanks Bridger for that introduction. As Bridger said, my name is Bart and Stam, and today I'll be talking about applying the scientific process to my ag operation. So first, we need to learn about what the scientific process is. The scientific method is a process for experimentation that is used to explore observation and answer questions. The steps may vary slightly as used by scientists, but generally the scientific process includes these steps. First, we're gonna ask a question, then we're gonna perform background research. We're going to establish a hypothesis. Step four is we're gonna test that hypothesis. We're gonna make an observation. As we start to wind down this process, we're going to analyze the results and draw a conclusion. And then to finish up, we're going to present the findings. The goal here is to discover cause and effect relationships by asking questions, carefully gathering and examining the evidence and seeing if all the available information can be combined into a logical answer. The scientific method starts here when we ask a question about something that we observe. A lot of times this has been described as the how, what, when, who, which, why, or where. For an ag operation, it might be, should I spray weeds with a certain chemical? Or should I change the way I graze my cattle? For step two, rather than starting from scratch and putting together a plan for answering your question, you wanna be a savvy scientist by using a library and internet research to help you find the best way to do things and ensure that you don't repeat mistakes from the past. Asking fellow ag producers what they have done would also be a great way to accomplish this step. Step three, establishing a hypothesis. A hypothesis is simply an educated guess about how things work. It is an attempt to answer your question with an explanation that can be tested. A good hypothesis allows you to then make a prediction. For instance, it might be, if I do this, then this will happen. Figure out both your hypothesis and the resulting prediction you will be testing. Predictions, must be easy to measure, or, or at least you must have the ability to be able to measure those predictions. A specific ag-related example might be, if I spray Russian knapweed with milestone, I will have more desirable forages for my livestock. In step four, we want to test this hypothesis. This is where you will actually be doing your own research. This experiment tests whether your prediction is accurate and thus your hypothesis is supported or not. 
it is important for your experiment to be a fair test. You conduct a fair test by making sure that you change only one factor at a time while keeping all other conditions the same. You should also repeat your experiments several times to make sure that the first results weren't just an accident. Step five is to make an observation. Once your experiment is complete, you collect your measurements and analyze them to see if they support your hypothesis or not. There are some tools that can be helpful in this step that we'll talk about more in other presentations, such as a partial budget. In step six, we're going to analyze the results and draw a conclusion. Often our predictions were not accurate and a hypothesis is not supported. In such cases, you can go back and construct a new hypothesis and prediction based on the information you learned during this experiment. This starts much of the process of the scientific method over again. So for instance, from this slide, if you did an experiment that did not support your hypothesis, you might return to step three and then go ahead and repeat the process again. If your hypothesis was supported by this experiment, we'll go on to the final step in the scientific process. This final step or step seven in this case is to present the findings. Depending on your situation, this step might include an assignment you turn in. It might include sharing the results with your management team or the owners of an ag operation. And if this has been done, for instance, in college, especially in graduate school, this final step might even include something as formal as submitting your findings to a scientific journal to be peer reviewed and then published so that others can read them and benefit from your experiment. Thank you for going through the scientific process with me today. We do have an assignment for you, and that is to read the project report titled, Goats as a Weed Control Alternative in Small Acreage Ranchettes. After you've read that final report, we are going to ask you in this assignment to identify each of the steps of the scientific process as we've outlined today in this presentation. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and also hopefully you'll find some benefit from it and the other videos in this series.